Welcome back. We are ready to start game two of this doubleheader after a big Spartan victory, 14 to nothing in game one. I'm Bruce Wozniak, joined once again by Chris LeCastro. As for game two, we will see Mariah Galehouse in the circle for the Spartans. And leading things off at the plate for Ursuline. And you see the first pitch on the way. That is Giovanna Herrera. And Galehouse delivers her second pitch of the game. That one is chopped to short, fielded by Balmer over to first. And they do get her a close play. That stellar defense translates right over to game two. Play deep in the hole, shortstop, makes a long throw to put away the first hitter. And so that'll bring up the number two hitter, Casey Barton, and promptly follows off the first pitch down the third base line. And we saw a bunch of player changes in game one, lineup changes. And so back behind her familiar home play position. Great catch there by Steph Ballmer. Wow. Well, we're starting to mention catch. Lexi Chevalier being back behind the plate, and Steph Ballmer says, talk about me instead. Look at this great defensive play I'm going to make here. Yeah, back-to-back. -back. Starts off with the deep ground ball on the hole, and then laying out just, again, as we said before, stellar defense in game one, and already first two plays of the game, we see it again. And now Galehouse sends in her first pitch to the third Ursuline batter of the game. This is... Tara Backherms, the second base player for the Arrows. Next pitch to her on the way, and that's a strike. And Galehouse quickly to work here in this second game of the doubleheader. The 0-2 on the way, swing and a miss. And just like that, the Arrows go three up and three down to start things off. So we'll be back with the Spartans' first at-bat of this second game right here on tampaspartans.tv. This is the University of Tampa. Back here for the Spartans in the top, excuse me, bottom of the first. Lauren Fantone to lead things off against Kendall Smith, who did pitch yesterday in that doubleheader against Eckerd. Only pitched a third of an inning. And here she is working the next day. And her first pitch, a ball to Lauren Fantone. And Fantone sends that one outside the spectator seating area. It'll be interesting to see if the Spartans can continue that hit parade from game one or if it might have had an effect on their energy. It's definitely 
a topic to keep an eye on for this game. Antone, the Spartans left fielder. Seventy six degrees our temperature for the start of game two. Antone the two one on the way to her looks at that one. Three and one now. And just catches as you saw Fantone thinking that she drew ball four. So the count full. Good crowd on hand this afternoon for this opening game of the 2023 season. And that one will be ball four. And Fantone goes down to first base. She is the first runner in game two of a doubleheader that we saw game one end early by way of the run ahead rule as the Spartans were victorious 14 to nothing. And you have to wonder if any of that momentum will translate over to game two today. In that first game, the Spartans bookended five run innings. They had five in the first and five in the fourth and didn't even need to bat in the fifth, as I mentioned, by way of the run ahead rule. And you saw there as Lauren Fantone advances to second. And so now Lily Keister, 1-0 on the way to her from Kendall Smith, shows bunt, that goes foul. Already with a runner in scoring position here, looking to potentially advance her over to third with a bunt. Maybe lay down a sacrifice and try to bring in some runs early on, as they did in game one. Shows bunt again. Looks like she just missed that one. Lily Keister behind now, one and two. Lauren Fantone watching the pitcher from her position at second base. And that one goes way outside, and Fantone's going to easily go to third. And I should mention, this is a different catcher for Ursuline. In game one, we saw Madison Jacosh behind the plate. And for game two, it's Hannah Jones. And Keister follows that one back to the screen. So she stays alive here. Count is two and two. Keister ready. And Smith winds, delivers, and Keister really working this at bat. Yeah, definitely already fighting early in this game. And this is what takes a toll on your pitcher or your defense, trying to get these early outs and having to battle and scratch and fight for every last one, even from the beginning. And ball three. Kendall Smith, pitch on the way, and Keister sends that one to right field and caught routinely, and coming home is Fantone, and she's safe. Well, Keister got jammed on that inside pitch, but not quite enough to delay the momentum of that ball traveling into right field to be able to drop in between, but they still bring in a run and put the Spartans in the lead here, one nothing. And Again, in the first inning, continuing the trend of scoring runs every inning for the Spartans. And credit Josephine Horgan, the right fielder for Ursuline, who made the catch and quickly was on the mark getting the ball home. And just a timing thing that Fantone got in just under it. And so the Spartans 
get their first run of game two as this is now Alexa Russo. As she watches that one. Ball two. And the arrows, there's a shot by Russo. That's going to be at least two, I got to believe. Goes all the way to the wall. Russo still on the move, heading for third. The throw's going to come in, not in time, as Alexa Russo with a triple. And I was starting to say that the arrows have to be careful because now you're getting into the meat of the Spartans' order as the cleanup hitter, Caroline Watson, coming to the batter's box now and already up one to nothing. And a runner on third. And the Spartans, granted there is one out, but hoping that they can pick up where they left off in game one. Yes, this is a definitely a key instance. Well done by the catcher here to go out, talk to your pitcher, try to settle her nerves a little bit and just tell her to get back into the groove, especially in a situation like this when the fourth hitter, the slugger of the lineup, comes up to bat with a runner in scoring position. It's worth noting another freshman in the circle for Ursuline. They have eight freshmen on their team, and Kendall Smith being one of them. And working here against Watson. Check swing, and that one goes foul. Three and one now to Caroline Watson. Next pitch from Smith and popped up. And that should be a routine out and is. And as routine a catch as that is, important one because psychologically for the arrows, all of a sudden you have two outs and that runner at third brace isn't as intimidating. You're just focusing on finishing the inning now. Yes, it eliminates the possibility for a sacrifice fly here now and takes a little bit of the pressure off the pitcher to just try to get her out in any way possible, not have to worry about avoiding those fly balls. Cameron Winninger, the batter for UT. As you saw, the first pitch in the dirt to her. So 0-1 now. Coming from Kendall Smith. And that'll go to one and one. Two and oh, the, excuse me, two and oh, the count. That was and Winninger looked at that one too. And that time, Smith able to get it into the strike zone. Smith changing up her delivery a little bit. She took a long pause in between those pitches, which definitely can mess with the batter a bit. And you see there, catcher Jones trying to frame that one to influence the umpire, who didn't go for it. So three and one now to winning her. Ground ball and nice effort by the shortstop, unsuccessful as it goes into the outfield. And going for three, and Winninger goes in standing up. So back-to-back -back triples. Excuse me, that was two out of three triples. Had the routine pop out to short in between, but two triples this inning for the Spartans. And they go up two to nothing as Mariah Galehaus comes to the plate and has Winninger now over at third. And Galehaus looks at that one for a ball. The key here for the Spartans has been hitting the balls hard. As you saw with Winninger there, 
even though it was a ground ball, it had so much speed that it traveled all the way to the wall, and that's what drew it down into a triple. Yeah, and you do have to credit Giovanna Herrera. It was a diving attempt that she made it short. We saw a play in the first game that should have been routine and just was a mental error. And those are the little things that a coach likes to see. Even if it does get through, at least you gave it your best effort. And oh. eventually, over the course of a long season, you will make those plays. They're, they'll balance out. Here comes the 2-1, way up high. Have Alhouse to, comes way out of the batter's box. Have to credit Jones here. She's made a couple of nice saves behind the plate already today. And here comes the 3-1, and Gale House goes down to first. Oh, look out. And like you say, Jones showing her medal behind home plate, had the wherewithal to try to play down at third there. Winninger just got back in time, although the third base player was off the bag. Yeah, it seems the third base player, um, maybe even anybody on the field, wasn't prepared for that. So that was a nice heads-up play by the catcher to keep her mind in the game and try to pull something over the Spartans here. It's Christina Dalton, the third base player. And the pitch to Lexi Chevalier as the Spartans now have runners on the corners. Up two to nothing here in the bottom of the first. Chevalier and that one will be caught for out number three by Kristen Kopp, but not before UT continues the streak. As Chris pointed out, they've scored in every inning so far today. Scored in all four runnings of game one. And scored two here in the bottom of the first. So through one complete, the Spartans have a 2 to nothing lead. We'll be back with more. You're watching TampaSpartans.tv. Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can. And then they push harder. Because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are Division II. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win. On the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive to achieve every goal we aim for because we want to be champions at the Back here to start the top of the second. And Ursuline looking for their first run of the day. And you might think that sounds premature, saying, well, it's only the top of the second. No, we've already had an official completed game here. They went, they batted through five innings game ended early due to the run ahead rule the Spartans won 14 to nothing and the second game of the double header a goose egg for them in the top of the first and the batter is Christina Dalton Ursuline is also in search of just their third hit of the day as well trying to muster up some offense a little something more than what they were able to manage in game one and there's a ground ball and played routinely for out number one. But, you know, you have to be careful here because the Spartans, you start to get a little too confident, and eventually the law of averages is going to come to play that the arrows will start finding their offense. And so long as it is only two to nothing, that could, that could come back to hurt you really quickly. 
So it's important really for the Spartans. There's just as much pressure on UT as there is on Ursuline that the Spartans don't get lazy and think we have this in the bag. We won the first game 14 to nothing. We're already up 2 to nothing. So they really have to keep their heads in the game. Yes, definitely. Spartans should not take their eyes away from that finish line of staying aggressive. Galhaus flips that one over to first for out number two. Just making sure that they keep their passion up for the rest of this game. Keep playing aggressively. Keep their minds in it. And not to get complacent or appreciate where they're at and keep striving to continue to score. Galehouse and induces that one where we get a three up, three down as a routine ground ball played there. And just like that, the arrows are done in the top of the second. No runs, no hits, no Spartan errors, and no Ursuline base runners left. So just like that, we will go to the bottom of the second. More Spartan softball coming up on TampaSpartans.tv. Back with you at the Namoli Family Stadium. And Chris, the softball gods are looking down upon me. I was looking for an opportunity in the top half of this inning to talk about Gabby Mack being the Spartans' first base player. We did not see her in game one, so a chance defensively for her. And she had all three putouts in the top half of this inning. And lo and behold, here she is, the first batter of the bottom half of this inning. So a chance to recognize the freshman. As you see her batting here against Kendall Smith. Exciting time for Gabby Mack. And that one's in the dirt. Might kick off with some butterflies here first at bat. But it's a solid opportunity with a 2-0 lead. Get something started for your team here in the inning. And Gabby Mack, it looks like the distinction of being the tallest player on the Spartans roster. And the next pitch from Kendall Smith on the way to her is outside. Just one of four freshmen on the roster for Tampa. Three one coming to Gabby Mack. And she watches ball four go by. And so Mack, another leadoff batter on base for the Spartans. Is something that seems to be a trend today, Chris. They say that getting the leadoff batter on always spells trouble for the defense of the pitching, and that has certainly lived up to its namesake in the past couple of games so far we've seen. I mentioned Gabby Mack being the tallest player at 5'11". Well, here's 5'10", Steph Ballmer, the number nine hitter in the UT batting order. Ballmer, we mentioned, one of the few Spartans players that couldn't seem to manage a hit in game one. 
Looking to make a change in this game. Looks like they were calling for a bunt, but you wonder if she'll make an adjustment and be allowed to swing away here and possibly wipe away that hitless streak. Here comes the 2-0 to her, showing bunt again. Expect her to take here, 3-0. It does feel a, a little different, as you were mentioning, with the play from Hannah Jones behind the plate. You saw quickly that the pitcher Kendall Smith ducked down thinking that maybe there was going to be a play by Jones attempted at second. And it's taking nothing away from Madison Jacosh, just two very different catching styles, I think, that we've seen in games one and two for the arrows behind the plate. As UT now with runners on first and second as we go back to the top of the order, Lauren Fantone. And the wind still hanging around all day. We mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast of game one that the American flag in right center field blowing from right to left. And still the case here, although still a beautiful day, as I mentioned, 76 degrees. And you can see on your screen the tremendous amount of sunshine across the field. As Kendall Smith gets ready against Lauren Fantone and a bunt. They will get Fantone at first, but the runners move up. So second and third now for the Spartans, with that being the first out of this bottom of the second inning. That ball died right in front of Fantone. Didn't have much wiggle room to make work its way up to the pitcher or give them any opportunity to get one of the lead runners out. So now they have runners in scoring position here, just one gone. And Lily Keister, the batter. Ball one to her. Keister showing bunt. Strike one to her. Tampa coach is aiming to have these batters play small ball with the bunts and the short ground balls, just trying to work their way onto the bases without having to dive too deep into the power game. Keister falls behind now, one and two. Seeing her looking a couple times down towards third base for some indication from her head coach, Leslie Cantor. And it's Kendall Smith ready with the next pitch, and that one's up high. The count goes even at two and two. And let's see if Keister can bring home at least one of these Spartan base runners. Second base is Steph Ballmer. Third base is Gabby Mack. And there's a routine grounder. They'll go for the out at first. So Mack does score. And the lead increases to three to nothing. That'll bring up Alexa Russo. Spartans are one for two today with two outs, so. Bounce down to short, over to first in time. And so the side is retired, but not before UT continues their streak of getting at least one run in every inning so far today, including game one of this doubleheader. So the Spartans in the lead three to nothing through two. We'll be back with more between the Spartans and the visiting Ursuline Arrows. You're watching TampaSpartans.tv. This is the University of Tampa.
explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Bruce Wozniak back here with you alongside Chris LeCastro. Opening day of the 2023 season for the University of Tampa Spartans. A hold a three to nothing lead here over Ursuline. And the first pitch of the top of the third is strike one. Seems like she wasn't expecting an off speed pitch there. Started to check her swing and by the time she tried to pull back, it was a little too late. Batter is Josephine Horgan, and she lashes that one that's going to be played by Russo over to Mac for out number one. That was a nice piece towards the hole, and over at second base, she was able to backhand that ball. Had a little flair to that play. That'll bring up Madison Jacosh, who we mentioned was the catcher in game one. She's the designated player here in game two. And her first at-bat starts with a strike from Mariah Galehouse. The visitors went three up and three down in each of the first two innings, and all of a sudden it's two up and two down. As Mariah Galehouse, very, very effective, very efficient with her pitching early on here in game two. Galehouse just at 17 pitches in her third inning. That is quite the low count. Danielle Hoffman, the batter. And strike one to her. If Galehouse continues at this rate, she can go deep into this game with such a low pitch count. Not too many strikeouts, but the more balls that go into play, the quicker she gets through. Oh, right back to her. Galehouse helps her own cause. As they do go three up and three down for the third straight inning. And so UT in the lead three to nothing. They will bat in the bottom of the third when we return right here on TampaSpartans.tv. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. Back live here at the Namoli Family Stadium. The Spartans in the lead three to nothing and getting set to bat in the bottom of the third. Leading things off for UT will be Caroline Watson. She is 0 for 1 in this game having popped out to short back in the first inning. And she is facing pitcher Kendall Smith, who we mentioned a freshman. She hails from Clarence, Iowa, and getting ready to go back to work here against these very potent Spartans bats. Swing and a miss for strike one by Watson. You can see even just from that last swing by Watson, she was looking for the fences with that slight uppercut trying to take this ball out. Smith, the sign from Jones. Count goes to one and one. Waiting on deck, Cameron Winninger. So we are at the four, five, and six hitters in the UT lineup to lead off this bottom of the third. Oh, and there's another hit by pitch as Watson goes to first base and 
combining that with game one, I believe that that's the third hit-by-pitch occurrence that we've seen today. And it's all been Spartans batters. Yeah, you have to wonder if that has something to do with control as we see a pinch runner come out here. Mackenzie Allen going into pinch run for Watson. So Cameron Winninger into hit here. There's a shortstop doing a nice job talking to her pitcher, just keeping her calm, making sure that she has an objective in mind and doesn't stray too far. Winninger had a triple in her first at bat. Drove one in. And here comes the first pitch to Winninger and shows Bunt. And oh, nice play there. Good heads up play defensively by Kristen Kopp for the out. That will bring up Mariah Gailhouse, the pitcher, who, as I mentioned, during game one is very effective with the bat. She walked in the first inning and here she is in the third and that's gonna be ball one to her. And a throw down to second, not in time. So Mackenzie Allen gives the Spartans another runner in scoring position. And the 1-1 one -one coming to Mariah Galehouse up high for ball two. The 2-1 to Galehouse, and base hit down the left field line, and Allen's going to come all the way around, and she does score standing up. And the Spartans add to their lead. Nice job by Galehouse. She got jammed on that pitch and on the hands, but she was able to go in the direction of the pitch and pull it into third and pull it into the left field line just out of reach of the third base player. She does end up at second base. By the way, the attention on Mackenzie Allen scoring UT's fourth run of the day. But Galhaus ends up with a double. And UT maintains their streak of runs per inning. And Galehouse scores, and wow, going all the way to third will be Chevalier. I think on that cutoff there, they weren't expecting the runner to be waved around to home, which is why there was a slight hesitation and then the high throw. Just kind of took them by surprise. That's what these Spartans do. They play aggressively. That'll bring up Gabby Mack. Spartans know it five to nothing with one out. And that one goes outside for a ball. And a strike there.
Next pitch is swung on, and there will be a routine grounder over to first. They go to home, and they do get the double play. So they get out of the inning, do the arrows, but the Spartans add two more. They lead five to nothing through three complete. More on the way here on TampaSpartans.tv. For college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And for the college sports. sports. What do you get when you take your favorite food and stuff it inside a pocket of homemade dough? Cooked perfectly until golden brown. It's a mouth-watering empanada from Mr. Empanada. No one makes a better empanada. Take Ted Webb's word for it. Almost as good as my mom used to make. Check out our website for a location near you. MrEmpanada.com It's not about any one thing. It's about how everything comes together. How it all connects. People. ID. And we're back here with Tampa Spartan bait softball here in the top of the fourth inning. Leading off is Herrera for Ursuline Arrows. As we see Galehouse back out on the mound, just at 19 pitches entering the fourth inning. First pitch is a fastball right down the middle for strike one. Galehouse really seems to be in control of this game. Off speed on the outside corner, strike two, and she's up 0-2 just like that. Continues to ride the streak of dominance over Ursuline with her pitching power. And that one sails high for a ball. See signs being signaled down to the batter. One and two count. Has to protect the plate. That one falls low and outside. Ball two. Evens it up. Herrera's 0 for 1 today. Grounded out to shortstop in the first inning. And she gets a sharp ground ball, diving play by second base. And he got him at first. What an incredible play by Russo laying out to make that play for the first out of the inning. That was some excellent defense as we've seen both in this game as well as the game earlier today. Really well done. That brings up Claire Barton from left field. 0 for 1 today. Shows bunt. And takes one just inside for a ball. Again, we've credited Tampa for their hitting and their pitching, but their defense has really been a star shining for this team. So they get ahead there, fouling one off. 1 and 1. Still just one strikeout so far for Gail House. And she gets a whiff on the lower outside corner there. Counts at one and two. And Gail House has some cards to play. Unexpected breaking ball there. Had the batter way out in front, pulling it foul. But staying alive, still one and two here. This third base creeps in a little bit, as does first. Showing bunt. And no indication that she went. No check down over at first base. Low and inside, ball two. Check 
chopper. Field by third. Fires to first. Second out of the inning. Nicely done by Winninger there. Two down. And that brings up Backrooms, the second base player. 0 for 1 today. Struck out in her first at bat. And takes one straight down Broadway for strike one. But wind up and delivery. Off speed fouled off down the third base line. And yet again, as we see a repetitive instance in this game, Gale House ahead in the count, 0-2. About to deliver her 31st pitch of the game in the fourth inning. Struck her out. Tip and catch ends the inning. And we move on to the top, to the bottom of the fourth inning. What do you get when you take your favorite food and stuff it inside a pocket of homemade dough? Cooked perfectly until golden brown. It's a mouth-watering empanada from Mr. Empanada. No one makes a better empanada. Take Ted Webb's word for it. Almost as good as my mom used to make. Check out our website for a location near you. MrEmpanada.com here we are, we're back, bottom of the fourth inning. Tampa leads five to nothing as they come up to bat. And here's Steph Ballmer batting from the right side, number two, the ninth hitter, and then we get to the top of the order. Ballmer walked in her first at bat, reached third in the second inning, and now she's up for a second time. Smith still out on the mound. She winds up and delivers. Hard grounder straight up the middle for a base hit. And there's Balmer's first hit of the game. Putting a runner at first to kick off this inning. And we go to Fantone, top of the order. Now with the runner on first, you have to wonder if there will be any indication of a steal, hit and run, or anything of the sort. Lefty against lefty matchup. Ball sails inside, skips away from the catcher, and that's going to advance the runner to second base to put one in scoring position. Nobody out. 1-0. It's going to be scored a pass ball. An accurate pitch. And she pulls that one foul down the first base line. First strike, evening up the count at one and one. Now Tampa today is five for 11 in terms of hitting on the day. 455 batting average. Those are some solid numbers. Drilled into right field. That's going to go for a base hit. Runner's going to come around third, and she will score. Cut off, no throw to the plate. And Tampa continues this route. It is six to nothing on six hits. Slight timeout going on here. So the coach evaluates something with the umpire here. Looking for a potential switch. And we may be seeing a double switch here in this game. It appears that we will be getting a new starting pitcher for the Arrows.
Tampa's team batting average on the season so far at 615. Won their first game earlier today by way of the run ahead rule to kick things off. And now here they are up six to nothing, scoring a total of 20 runs in two games. And we haven't even finished the second game just yet. Have not allowed a run just yet to Ursuline Arrows. As we get a new warming up pitcher, number 17. This will be Danielle Hoffman for the Ursuline Arrows. Hoffman came in from center field, now pitching from Chicago, Illinois, where she went to Trinity High School. Lefty batter, righty thrower. And the key here is just keep the ball in the strike zone, allow them to put it into play, and hope that your fielders will take charge, get some outs, get us through these innings, and put up some offense as things continue onwards. But Tampa has really done quite the job of taking care of those balls in the strike zone, putting them into play, and laying off anything outside, showing some excellent discipline as we're beginning to resume play. Leading off with number three, Keister. The lefty, she's 0 for 1 today, but has two RBIs. Tampa as a team is 6 for 12. And here we go. No outs. He's down a bunt, dribbles to third, fires to first. She's going to be safe despite the drop. And the runner advances to second, catcher covering third, first and second, nobody out. Now here's the second base player, Alexa Russo. One for two today, scored a run earlier, has a triple in the first inning. And she whips on that first pitch right down the middle, strike one. She clearly has some power. She's demonstrated it with some big swings today. And you know we are just waiting to see it get put into use. A hard line drive or a fly ball could do some serious damage here. And that might be it. It's going to go deep into center, but it's caught. And that's going to advance the runner to third and possibly to second as well. And we have two runners on, second and third. One out. Advances the runners. That brings in Mac Allen. From Tampa, Florida, homegrown, went to Wharton High School, a lefty. And it appears that time has been called. With one out here. Slight delay in play here for a minute. Allen scored earlier. And she slashes one foul into the backstop. Pulling off that pitch slightly for the first strike. And she takes that one up high. For a ball. Pitcher looking over for some signs. Reading her sleeve. Now she looks into the plate and fires. Taken in the dirt. Nice stop by the catcher. And my apologies, it's actually three and one is the count with one out here. Runners at second and third. Allen clearly has an advantage being a lefty batter against the righty pitcher. 
and she takes it high upstairs, ball four, and that loads the bases. Still just one out. As Winninger comes up to bat from Plant City, Florida. She's one for two today. Tripled in the first inning, drove one in. And then flew out over to first base in the third inning. In her third at bat, here we go. And she sends that bat into the backstop, nearly beheading the on-deck batter. A foul tip for strike one. She settles back into the box, hopefully glued to that bat for the second pitch, waiting for the delivery now. Takes it upstairs, ball one, evens the count with the bases loaded and got a hope here. Smith just looking to throw some strikes, not allow any more walks or give up any free runs. And she drives one into center field, going back, makes the catch. That's going to bring in a run. Every runner is going to advance, cut off by the pitcher, and that brings the score to 7 nothing. Second out of the inning. Now runners at second and third, and that brings up Gale House. Gale House is... Pulled double, double duty today, pitching as well as hitting. It's second and third. She's one for two today. Takes one just upstairs, ball one. Smith is now up to 65 pitches. You have to wonder how much longer she'll last in this game. She drills that one foul. Oh, my apologies. It is Danielle Hoffman on the mound in the pitcher's circle right now. Smith was removed from the game. One and one. Off-speed pitch grounded down to short. Fires to first. And she's safe. First base fires the ball back in some frustration. I don't think they like that call, but it brings in another run, and it is now 8 to nothing on eight hits. That puts runners at the corners. Still two out, and Tampa just keeps pushing along their third run of the inning. Biggest offensive duty so far in this game. Lexi Chevalier comes up to bat now. She's one for two today with a double in the third inning. Drove in a run. Looking for her second hit of the day. And takes the first pitch outside, ball one. Again, it's really admirable to see the plate discipline by the Tampa Spartans here. Taking pitches outside, upstairs, all over the place. They haven't really shown any signs of chasing much. And she pops this one into left field. And it's put away by Taylor. And that'll end the inning, but not before Tampa tacks on another three. It is eight to nothing, Tampa over Ursula. Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can, and then they push harder. Because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are Division II. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win. On the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. 
We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive to achieve every goal we aim for because we want to be champions at the highest level, life. At Division II, the opportunities are here. Are you ready? Back live here at the Namoli Family Stadium and an interesting change for the home team as Kate DeSimone is going to take over in the pitching circle from Mariah Gelhaus to start here in the top of the fifth. Her team comfortably in the lead, eight to nothing. And to start off this top of the fifth, she deals, you see the first pitch there uh, against Christina Dalton. Spartans coming up will have some games at a neutral site, talking about next weekend as DeSimone induces a unassisted put out at first base there for out number one. Next Friday, UT will play in Longwood, Florida, 1 o'clock against Auburn Montgomery, 3.30 against West Florida, and then a week from today, still in Longwood, Florida, play a 1 o'clock game against Wingate. After that, they'll be off until returning to action here at home on Friday the 24th against Palm Beach Atlantic, a 6 p.m. start. And, of course, that will be here on TampaSpartans.tv. And I'd have to say, Chris, at this pace, the Spartans should be going into those neutral site games next weekend with a season-opening 2-0 record. 14-0, they won game one, and now up 8 to nothing here in the top of the fifth of game two. Certainly 22 combined runs in their first two games of the season. An incredible average per game. They've been hitting phenomenally. Their defenses look stellar, and the pitching has been on point. This is definitely how you want to kick off your season and have some confidence going into a few road matchups. And there's a grounder, Balmer at short, over to first for out number two. And getting back to this pitching change to start this half of the inning, as curious as it may seem, I liken this to what we saw in game one where Mary Beth Feldman was sailing along nicely, and all of a sudden they gave an opportunity to Gwen McGinnis, a freshman. Even though Kate DeSimone is not a freshman, it's still a case of let's give another pitcher a chance to see some innings here in regular season game action. Let's save the arm of Mariah Galhouse, which we're going to need over the long haul of the season. So maybe not that unusual after all in making the switch to Kate DeSimone as you see her with strike one there uh, against the third batter of the inning, which is Jaden C. Yeah, it definitely gives D. Simone a, a chance for some experience and creates some potential for the coach to look at other options throughout the season for pitchers to bring in and out of the bullpen, potentially start games, just to kind of evaluate some different options going into it. This is the time and place to do it in the second game of the season. And here she comes with the 0-2 and swing and a miss. Strike three and down goes Ursuline in the top of the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. So through four and a half, the Spartans eight to nothing. And that means that as we saw in game one, that will be the ball game by way of the run ahead rule. And so now we can say it out loud instead of having the broadcaster's curse that that is a combined no-hitter by the Spartans pitching staff and most of it carried by Morale Galhouse until we saw Kate DeSimone finish things up there in the top of the fifth. Definitely an incredible feat. We saw Galehouse not only delivering a stellar pitching game, but she kept her count low, ensured that she let some balls get into play, but they were soft ground balls, pop-ups, no hard line drives, nothing that could find the grass and really took some dominance. And then that passed right along to DeSimone. We saw her finish up the job last couple of innings, and that's an excellent achievement to have, a no-hitter in just the second game of the season. And it brings up an interesting kind of 
yin and yang in that you have Tampa that looked so complete today, offensively and defensively, and you have to wonder, we started off on such a high, can we come back this strong next weekend in these three neutral site games? And for Ursuline, you say, okay, we need to forget this opening weekend in Florida, the games yesterday against Eckerd, the two games here against Tampa, and throw those out and just start the season all over again our next time out. Very opposite starts, but you could argue as much pressure on both teams because Tampa could get really high after this and say that, as you mentioned, 22 runs in two games, well, we got this in the bag, and that's where you start getting overconfident, and all of a sudden these other teams put a bullseye on you, and now your confidence starts to fall. Yes, definitely. This is where Tampa needs to maintain this enjoyment, relish in an incredible achievement of a no-hitter, 22 runs in two games, didn't allow a single run, Hardly gave up any hits in two games, but they need to keep practicing, keep their heads held high, and especially going into a couple of road matchups where that environment can definitely take an impact on you, as you have to wonder if it did have some kind of impact on Ursuline today, and hope that Tampa just maintains this momentum and continues strongly throughout this season. Another important takeaway from today for the Spartans, I think, was the opportunity to give some playing time to some of these younger players who otherwise weren't going to see the field if this was a one-run game, if this was a two-run game. And so very early on, Leslie Cantor got to get some freshmen some innings and see what they can do in their collegiate debut. Yes, absolutely. Especially when you're a freshman the game of softball just coming up to college and you find, you make the team is an incredible achievement as it is, but then you have to stop and wonder if you're going to have a chance to make it into any of these games within a week, two weeks, a couple of days. And here they are, day one, already getting a chance to shine, work out some of their skills and see themselves on the bigger field now. So that's definitely a great opportunity for them to gain some experience, look forward to the rest of the season as well as give the coach a few new opportunities and potential players to use going so forward. So the Spartans start off the 2023 season 2-0. and They win game one 14 to nothing. They win game two 8 to nothing on a combined no-hitter. I'm Bruce Wozniak for Chris LaCastro. Thank you for spending your Saturday afternoon with us and for watching on tampaspartans.tv.